Hey everybody, welcome to the iOS 11 on iPad, what's new video. This is a follow-up to my previous video, iOS 11 on iPhone, what's new. But as I'm sure you've guessed by now, this video is focused on the changes in relation to the iPad with iOS 11. I won't be going over every single change in this video, but I will go over what I feel are the big new features that everyone will notice. With the release of iOS 11, Apple has completely changed the user experience with an emphasis on multitasking. Everything seems more fluid and connected. iOS 11 now lets you drag and drop app files between multiple apps, drag an icon from the newly introduced dock to open a windowed app on top of your full screen app, and more. So let's get into these changes. The first big change you'll notice right away is a new dock feature. The new dock is a foundational change for iPad according to Apple. It's now available from any screen. So with just a swipe, you can open and switch apps instantly. You can customize it with your favorite apps, and it also changes as you work. It will even intelligently suggest apps like ones you've opened recently, and the last one you were using on your iPhone or Mac. They'll all appear on the right side of the dock. Pretty cool idea. Next is the new control center. This is a big change as well. When you swipe up further than swiping up for the dock, you'll get the new control center on top of the dock with the classic control center type controls and a column on the right and all of your previous apps that you would see using the app switcher in the past on the left. Now in iOS 11, if you double press the home button for the app switcher like in previous versions of iOS, this will bring up control center as they are now integrated. I think this integration is a great idea. When going through the Control Center controls, they mostly have the same feel as a new Control Center on the iPhone with iOS 11. Except instead of 3D pressing the wireless and music sections to present more detailed options, you just long press. The only downside I've experienced with this new Control Center on iPad is for when I want to connect my AirPods. It requires an additional step now. I used to just swipe up, then swipe left, and select my AirPods. Now I have to swipe up, long press music, then press the AirPlay button, and then select my AirPods. Not that bad, but it's still one extra step. To use the app switcher in Control Center, you start swiping right, and you'll see more of your previous apps appear. Force quitting an app is the same as before, just swipe up. Overall, I have to say, I really like this new approach. When using your iPad in Landscape, it's even more Mac-like now. I think iOS 11 will be the tipping point for people who only need to use a computing device for light email and web browsing. When you combine an iPad or an iPad Pro with a keyboard case, this could actually now replace the need for a laptop for some users. Also, now iOS 11 makes the iPad Pro with an Apple Pencil ideal for students or business meetings with a new Instant Notes feature on any iPad Pro. To use it, you just wake the iPad Pro using either the Home button or Sleep Wake button and tap the pencil's tip on the screen. That's it. You are now in a kind of notes limbo, where the device isn't unlocked, but you have full access to the drawing tools. This is a fantastic feature because it really is as fast as using a pad of paper. If you're in a meeting or a class, you don't have to keep the screen lit up the whole time just to take notes. You can just tap a button to wake the iPad, then tap with the pencil and start jotting down notes. I can see myself using this feature a lot in the future. Another new iOS 11 with iPad improvement is a new multitasking feature. Now it's very practical and useful to run two apps side by side. You can do this in both portrait and landscape mode. A common setup I've been using is having Safari and Notes open together to take notes from what I'm reading in Safari. To do this, have the app you want on the left side open, then swipe up for the dock, then choose the app by long pressing it and dragging it up beside Safari. Now they're running side by side at the same time. Then you easily interact with both apps. This even works with file apps, where you can click and drag a file from one app to the other. And a really cool feature with that is the ability to drag more than one file at a time. While you have one file being dragged, just double tap another file to add it to what's being dragged. I think this is really cool. The next new feature I'm going to show you in iOS 11 on iPad is a new quick type keyboard. On this new keyboard, letters, numbers, symbols, and punctuation marks are now all on the same keyboard, so there's no more switching back and forth between two keyboards. Just flick down on a key to quickly select what you need. I really like this for exclamation marks, typing email addresses, and inputting numbers. So much easier now. Whoever thought of this deserves a prize. 
Other improvements or differences in iOS 11 that are definitely worth mentioning are the new document scanner built into the Notes app that I explain more in my other iOS 11 on iPhone video in more detail if you'd like to learn about that. Also, the App Store now has a new look on iPad as well, with App Store listings getting more screen space. And of course, the new Files app that I mentioned briefly earlier in this video, giving the iPad its own file management tool. Well everybody, those are the big changes I've encountered using iOS 11 on iPad so far. All the observations in this video are made using the iOS 11 public beta and of course could be subject to change upon the final release coming this fall. I'll be sure to do a follow-up video after the final version is released. There are other changes and differences between iOS 10 and 11 in relation to iPad that I did not mention in this video. Are there any you think anyone should know about that I didn't include? If so, let us know in the comments below. If you found this video helpful or informative, why not give it a thumbs up? And while you're down there, don't forget to subscribe to the channel for more tech videos, including tech how-tos, every week. As always, thanks for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.